go ahead and get started. Uh, can everyone just give me a quick confirmation that they can hear me okay? Great, thanks. Uh, so yeah, we had a really busy month of August. Uh, since last we talked, we deployed uh, a lot of stuff to the marketplace as well as the other web properties that we manage. Um, some of the ones I want to highlight today um, are we did the best-selling sort changes. Uh, so that released, I believe, in the first week of August, like right after we met last time. Uh, so that used a change where we look at how well the items in your particular store have been selling over the last 30 days. So now when someone goes directly to your store, it should be correctly sorting um, all of your items in your best-selling sort. We also deployed uh, some changes to how we do pagination. We were do we, we ran into some weird bugs where like uh, certain searches wouldn't display beyond certain page points or um, some merchants were having trouble loading things in their order pages. Uh, so some weird, some strange weird bugs uh, with how we were doing pagination. Uh, so we released a new way of doing pagination uh, and fixed those bugs. We also uh, fixed uh, some changes with relevance sorting, where we had a function scoring bug. Uh, so you may have noticed that if you had searched a certain keyword, um, certain items would pop up in relevant search that just really didn't, weren't really relevant to that keyword. Uh, so that got fixed. We also had uh, some problems with people's favorite stores uh, and favorites pages not loading or taking really long time to load. Uh, so we fixed that as well. Uh, we also added some new features to the favorite stores. Uh, so now you can sort your favorite stores uh, by what was last updated. So if you go to your favorite stores list, you can sort them by who has added new items to their store. And we also updated uh, wish lists and added sorting by creation date of the item. So you can look at what was the last created date on items that you've added to your wish list. And we also had a hotfix last week to address uh, some outages to where we were having like uh, certain pages 504 or uh, marketplace might go down for 60 seconds or so. Um, we shouldn't be seeing any more issues around that. But it, it could be still popping up in some places. Um, so yeah, the first thing I want to ask is, is anyone encountering any kind of weird issues or having any problems since a lot of the updates we've had this month? Favorite source is taking a long time to load for you. Is the item called infinite bed or is the store called infinite bed? Uh, let me take a look at that right now. Uh, okay, I see. Infinite's like the brand name.
<laughs> yeah, I've seen that problem too. That is really weird. Okay, I'll jot that one down uh, and we'll take a look at that. Is there anything else that anybody else is running into that's been a weird problem? The shopping cart got emptied uh, recently. Yeah, so if you select the drop down sort, um, it should be there. Interesting. We, we haven't emptied anyone's shopping carts anytime recently. Um, and it's happened two times in the last couple of weeks. Uh, did you happen to know how many items you had at your cart during that time? That's really weird. Pop that one down too, we can take a look at that. I know there is a, a button to like clear your cart that's right next to um, another button that is not to clear your cart and sometimes people misclick it. You're also not the first person to tell me that you've had uh, over 40 items in your cart. Like, I, So we increased the cart size. I believe it used to be 10 um, a few months ago. And I, I, I run to Lin, or not Lin, I run to residents all the time who tell me that they have 40, 50 items in their cart. Um, I'm really curious, like, why do you have so many items in your cart? Is it that you're just, it's just, a, just kind of like a list of items you want to look out later and it's just easy to find? You had 90 at one point? Okay. Uh, what's the number one uh, reason you don't like uh, the favorites or wish list?
Uh, how do you normally search the wish list? Do you just use like control F? Or I'm sorry, not the wish list, the cart. So uh, the number one reason we don't like to use it is because it's just slow to, and I'm, I'm sure it's probably slow right now, um, but it's, just, it's, it's slow to load for like the favorites and wishlist page. I don't have a ton on mine, but mine loads pretty quick. So I'm curious, how many do, um, do you have on your wishlist? It's been slow, it's just not slow right now. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised to hear that we have that feature. Um, it's not in the most easily findable spot. And then when you add things to your wish list, it's kind of like small and off to the side on the product page. Same with favorites. Hi, can you all hear me? Okay, so for a long time, um, there have been a lot of like products on the marketplace that are like from 2009 and stuff. And I was wondering when uh, there'd be a date uh, released or date, you know, put on the marketplace sort of thing displayed. And if you could sort by that, because... Like, you know, some of those products we, yeah, <laughs> some of those products are like, you know, I don't want them anymore. <laughs> I don't want to see them. You don't want to see them uh, on the marketplace, like a product that was created a long time ago? Am I summarizing I mean, that right? I don't think it should be taken down, right? But I think that it should be, um, you know, you should be able to sort and filter through, you know, stuff that you that's just from, you know, a millennia ago. It should be like inventory where you can actually custom sort your inventory to show you the last uh, 365 days and then everything else you don't see or it means you can actually sort older than 365 days and go, go, who's not here today actually does that and then just deletes everything that's older than a certain time period. But I love um, being able to grab things, especially for Bakes on Mesh, that are older because the content back then was some of the creators back then were texture geniuses. So I wouldn't want it to be gone, but I do understand going through just items that are just, yeah, not the same quality. So if we could have a date – that would probably stop the thing from needing a listing thing. We would actually just say everything that's been released in the last year. Uh, for the date, I, I'm assuming, but I want to make sure, I'm just going to ask just in case, that we mean like the last time that item was updated or do we mean the actual original date that it was posted to the marketplace? 
I mean, me personally, I would like to know when it was originally put on and the update date and, you know, really as much information I, I can filter by as possible. Original date is the most important because updates can be actually put in in the description by the person that created it. They can say this was listed in 2007, but it's been updated, you know, every six months since then sort of thing, you know, just like a, oh, what are those things called? You know, when they do 1.2, 1, all the versions. So that can be put in. It's just that the listing date is the important factor. There's not a lot of content that's actually updated. So, like I said, if if it if we had to sacrifice something, I'd rather f sacrifice the updated than the original listing. To me. Yeah, this is definitely something that's been on my list of things that I'd really like us to get done. Um, I, I've even had people tell me that they'll kind of do this hacked way of, of figuring it out by looking at how old the late, the oldest review was to maybe guess like how old the item is, which, you know, it isn't, isn't a great experience. It, it, it really should be, able, you should be able to tell how old an item is. Sure. Because it, there are a lot of people that don't even know that sculpties existed. They weren't around. They don't know. So, or they might, sort of peripherally know that sculpting existed between 2009 and 2011. So if something's created in that range, they also know it's not mesh because mesh didn't exist till November 2011. So that can avoid that misconception that people have. Uh, so... I'm curious in everybody's ideas for how they'd like that to be implemented. Like, is a filter the best way to do it? Um, somebody mentioned trying to make it searchable. A filter is my first guess. Um, I, obviously, the first thing that would be the best thing would be to just at least show you the date on the product page. Um, yeah, that, at the bare minimum, that is what I would. That's what I would like. But it would be even better if it was also a filter you could search by, like, you know from this date to this date, so like from 2020 to 2023 or whatever. I have a question. Does London Labs have a way to visit or inspect listed items, including packed items, to figure out if they contain mesh or sculptees? Hmm. I don't know that one for certain. But you see where I'm going with this, because if a listing could say this item contains mesh or this item contains a sculpty, that would help. Like, for example, if I don't want to see any sculpties because, well, they're not relevant anymore for most people, I can just toggle that off. And that, if Linden Labs is a way to mark every listing. Goes back to the whole wanting the yellow box to actually be something more than just an object. It's the same thing. Sculpties should have had their own icon. Mesh should have had its own icon. Uh because then it would be visible in contents if it wasn't bagged, etc. Yeah, that's why it's so tricky because a lot of items are packed, so you have to inspect the prim, the prim, I uh, mean, inventory. Often one way to tell if something is a sculpt is that it doesn't have a demo because... Oh, that, was, that wasn't as common back in the sculpting days. Yeah. Also, Garfield, uh, that would be very tricky with uh, ML because um, <laughs> mesh body uh, creators are extremely, let's just say, prickly when it comes to getting the dimensions of their bodies. 
even things like weights. So I'm just jotting down some notes. Um, things that we'd like to see. The ability to have like a date range where we can filter out items that have a really old creation date. Uh, and then we'd also like to be able to see the creation date and the updated date on the product page. And then if possible, we'd like to be able to know what's a sculpty and what's not and be able to filter out sculpties or items that contain sculpties. Right. And prims. I mean, if you look at a beautiful picture of a house, you have no idea whether it's mesh, whether it's prims, whether it's sculpted windows. You know, there's just, there's no identifier there unless the person has been forthcoming with the information. And you're going to also have the people that will will sit there and say, everything's mesh. <laughs> no, it's has to, I think um, if you can introspect into... Uh, items being sold and find that it has mesh, a mesh item, then if it doesn't have a mesh item and doesn't have a sculpty, then likely it has prims. You, you can basically right. exclude it like that. There is actually say, um, a tag. Category. Sorry, sorry, my bad. There is actually a listing tag to say that your item has either full mesh or partial mesh, but it's not automatic and it's up to the person doing the listing. And sometimes people get confused or just lie, I've noticed. Like sometimes you'll see things listed as being mesh when they're sculpted, and sometimes you'll see things listed not as not being mesh when they're mesh. Um, it's a pain. Also, it doesn't seem to be searchable when you're trying to search the marketplace. There doesn't seem to be any way to use that tag. So I heard that you want to be able to know that something is containing a prim or a sculpty um, and be able to search and filter those out. But we currently do have a tag, like you mentioned, um, that just says either if it's full mesh or not. And that doesn't appear to be searchable. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are saying that oh, it's, it's the listing tools are really clunky and, and hard to use. Um, I'm curious, like, what if people could like tell me like their number one or number two biggest problem with it? What, what would it be? So, um, the common one I get a lot is that, hey, I, I have to make like 10 listings for the same item if I'm just going to change the color. I love the skew. Yeah, I think we've suggested something to solve that um, a few meetings ago where you could have like a drop down, um, basically a single listing and then a drop down of colors or sizes or bodies, basically a custom drop down that denotes different items of the same base listing. Yeah, like Amazon. So we, we talked about that in length about three meetings ago, that it was actually the idea is that you would list the jacket, but the jacket was available in 16 colors and a fat pack. And then you would just click on the color that you wanted and it go, would go to cart in blue and then it would go to cart in pink and then it would go to cart in orange and then you're done. And you, you're only doing the one listing. It's just the colors that you add separately. A slight addition to that, uh, not just going to cart, it would be nice um, and friendly to um, to people buying things if it also changed the picture, the vendor picture. Like, for example, if I choose a blue shirt, it should show, it should reflect in the vendor picture. That is, if the seller uploaded the picture to link with, with the, like, with the list item, if it makes sense. So the people, the person buying things would for sure know what they're actually purchasing, what color or body, or basically, basically every listing in a list um, has to be able to be linked to um, a, a vendor picture. 
so sure, that yeah, you can, can uh, yeah, so that otherwise, you know, there's sometimes sometimes creators don't even bother putting alternate pictures for their for their variants. Um, yes, but if you go to be able to tell, if you notice, uh, let's say a jacket with thirteen colors, you do have thirteen um, listings, and each listing does have a different color. So no, they uh, don't, first, though, Valis. They don't. Like sometimes they don't. You sometimes know, they will just, just use the same picture. Ad. Yeah, they'll put their ad in, and then they'll just write the color, and they might even they may have a color swatch as their second picture, but no, that is very rare because in worlds they also don't have a picture for every color. They just use a colored prim, or a just swatch. because it's a lot of work to do all the extra pictures. I agree, but um, if you. Um, if you don't provide the option, the quote unquote blame is going to be on Linden Labs. If you shift the option to creators, then, well, I mean, if they're lazy, that's, um, they get to blame themselves. They can't just say Linden's didn't provide the option. Right. We're not saying that there shouldn't be something. We're just saying that to, to expect that they're going to take a photo of every single color. I mean, look at some of the designers that you talk to in content creators. Some of those people. No, I mean, yeah, Sassy, I, I agree. agree. You're right. Seen colors and something, right? You, you're exactly right. I know. What I'm saying is that uh, don't give people uh, another reason to blame Blindons. It's instead provide them with the option. If they don't use it, that's a problem. But you ha let them have the option so they can't shift the blame. I imagined it having a color swatch option. So would I'm just asking you if this would be acceptable to you. Say I took a photo of the blazer that I have on now and the ad was the blazer. What if a, a large, like, you know, a large sized square to the right of the image was a color swatch of the taupe, the burgundy, the the floral version or whatever. Is that acceptable? Because I can see that being possible. I just can't see somebody standing there wearing the jacket, changing the jacket, waiting for the jacket to res, taking the photo. I personally would, but I know a lot of stores that don't. I, mean, I think those kind of presentation things are more up to creators and how they want to do their marketplace right, images. Right. I'm just saying if, 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 if it's just that they have to, I can see that being a problem. Something has to go somewhere. I'm just saying. No, how... I don't think that they should be forced to. Not at all. Okay. But they should be given an option to. Okay. I misunderstood. Let's say I thought you were saying that it was... No, 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 no. Let's say you're uploading a listing, right? And you can um, um, link it to 16 different colors through a drop-down, right? And you can upload it with a single uh, vendor picture. That's great. But if you would like to upload 16 different vendor pictures for each color and link them to that drop-down, you should be able to do that optionally. So in summary, as if we have variants, we need to be able to make sure that we can display those variants in the image somehow. Would, um, would we prefer, like, so I hear a lot of people tell me, like, they like, they would like it kind of like how Amazon does it, where on the actual product page, you have, like, different tiles for each variant that you can then click on and, and interact with. Is, is anyone opposed to that idea, or is that more or less kind of what we're thinking? Yeah, I was uh, about to suggest that because I think like a threaded listing where you just find the one jacket, and then when you click on the one jacket, you find all the other colors and items, relate, you know, all the different versions of that in there, like a, th like a thread, basically. That's how I imagined it at first. That's that's what I was sort of saying that because I wouldn't want it to say aqua because one person's decision of what aqua is is completely different than somebody else's. They 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 call teal aqua and I get ugh. Yeah. But <laughs> so I would actually want to see the proper the proper color represented somehow. I just didn't imagine that it would need to be a full picture because I it, we're not saying that you wouldn't have demos. We're not saying that that wouldn't exist. It's just that if it came in four colors and it was baby pink, baby blue, green, and orange, well, then you would click orange and you would get orange. But you would know what so, the orange was because you'd see it. 
I'm going to push back on it a little bit, Sassy. Um, I think people should be able to define their own fields. And the reason is we can't think of all the things people are going to categor categorize. Let's, for example, say I'm selling a pair of pants for four different bodies and I sell them per body. So I'd like a listing, a drop down of four different bodies a person can choose but, uh, from. Um, now, bodies change all the time. New bodies appear all the time. Lindens are not going to be updating the uh, drop down list for bodies to encompass every possible, every single body on the market. So basically make sure that we're not assuming the variants are always going to be color, just let them be general variants. Yeah, and, and even in, co in colors, it's better to have aqua and uh, let people be able to be creative with uh, how they name things and how many things they can, uh, they can add rather than provide a, a specific list people have to choose from. I think I've seen um, it done in generally two different ways when I look at like other e-commerce sites is that you'll have kind of like a bunch of thumbnails, like a bunch of tiles that have thumbnails of the item and then you click it and then it updates the page um, all on the product page. But I've also seen um, a version where it has like uh, a drop down, and then inside that drop down, it would have all of the options that you could select. And then when you select an option out of that drop down, it would then change the product page and the picture associated with it. Uh, I'm personally, I personally like the the thumbnails and the tiles, um, but that's just me. I'm curious I think though, it, 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 is color the number one thing that you, you want variants with, or is it something else? I, I think there's room for. Um, both versions work better for different applications for clothing and the likes, which is obviously the kind of number one thing people buy on the marketplace. Color is usually better, but for certain other things like, uh, you know, vehicles and buildings and other, you know, construction kits and other stuff, such stuff, it can be better to do drop down kind of things because they're just not, they're not the same. So mm -hmm. right. there, there, there are different like uses jewelry. for each. Jewelry could be silver and gold, but it can also be, you know, gemstones and and all sorts of different things. So I think allowing for different variants, but where the the lister includes what those variants are, because as as Valith was saying as well, you know, you've got the bodies now, but it shouldn't be limited where a Linden Lab decides these are the six bodies because there are more than the, the ab, there are so many more bodies than people assume. So it should be that you're allowed to list those body types. They're the ones that are available. Um, yeah, we can't predict uh, all the variations of all the things people are going to be wanting to sell by, be it bodies, colors. Um, I, I don't even know. Um, attachment points I'm, I'm just i'm just saying but yeah like allow people to define their own drop down list and link specific products to fields in that list i'm just trying uh, to um, think how you would actually put it into the marketplace sorry i'm thinking about the listings folders like how it's one thing to want the page to do something, but how are you going to put them in the right? You, you would associate place? them when you're doing yeah. your listing. You just yeah. you know, when, when you're doing your listing, you just you just choose which items are for what and which thumbnails are for what. It's it's not that difficult. But I'm just saying that the setup has to be there for the back end part of it, and that needs to make the clearest sense. As the well. back end doesn't have to change at all. Um, what you do is instead of uh, having 16 different listings for different colors of an item, you have a single listing uh, where the either drop down or thumbnails or, uh, by the way, both systems should probably be present and right. be a choice. Um, what you choose just links it to one of the um, items in the back end. Right. Instead so of be like uh, a the different. Mother, the parent or whatever, and then you'd have the children. So it'd be sort of like that, or you'd have like the root and then 
The others. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I mean, as far as a page goes, yeah. As as page UX goes, yeah, it's exactly that. But right. as far as items, just items, just as uh, um, ish, ishtori. I'm sorry for butchering your name. Um, That's fine. Uh, I said that uh, just associate the existing items as they are with the selection in the UX. It's, it would clean up so much. I mean, imagine just not having to list, you know, 47 um, things on your screen just because that item comes in 47 colours. That would be amazing. It would be so much easier to shop Marketplace. Does anyone have um, any examples handy of an item that they would have thought would be really benefited by having different variants on the same product page? Like just a link to the product page? Um, it really helps for me to bring examples to the team so they can kind of brainstorm off of it. <laughs> All the blueberry products. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's funny because it used to be chokers, uh, collars, sorry, collars. But if you had adult selected and you, you went to look for, I don't even know, like a necklace, you'd suddenly have 14 pages of collars but there'd only be three collars it would just be that they would come in you know 187 colors each <laughs> oh, i had not considered uh, permissions in this why well, it's great to like give me uh, examples is that it can be really easy to kind of focus on like one use case like you know colors um i had not considered uh, variants when regards to permissions. Well, now that a lot of stores have actually started selling by body separately, it's it's going to be a lot more load on marketplace. So putting implementing something like this sooner than later will help greatly, because you also have a lot of stores that just won't bother listing on marketplace at all because it's too much work. I've seen that quite a bit. I love it. Oh, and yeah, per but permission is also a great idea because, for example, a chair, you can sell a non-copyable chair for a single use, or you can sell a copyable chair for a lot more exp a lot more expensive for like a club if somebody wants to fill the club with chairs. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, content rating is also a pretty common one as adult versus PG versions of furniture. Right, but instead of them being two separate listings, it would be one listing, which would, again, save so much time. And it would also bring attention to the fact that there are things that are available that are grouped together. Um, you know, kind of like that bottom area where it's, you know, items that are similar to this that the person wants to put down. It it brings in that PG or the adult or the the stuff into the one place or all the color variants so it's right where you're looking rather than you missed it because it had gone to page two. Uh, so something I wanted to add is um, for variants, it's definitely something that we want to do and we have been playing around with it um, like building certain things around it. I just, I just don't know exactly when that can get delivered because we're still in like the brainstorming stages. Uh, and honestly, the, the biggest help is, is people coming to these things, uh, and also messaging me and sending examples and, and things that you'd like to see, because we, we want to build stuff that you want, not specifically that I would want. So, um, in short, we definitely are aware that this is a really requested feature. It's something that we want to build. Um, we are currently working on something similar. We just don't have all the details or exactly what a date for that, but it is a priority for us. I'm, I'm definitely going to advocate um, to the other Lindens that this is something that we all the residents and merchants really want. What I'd really like to suggest too is, can we have this meeting more than once a month? Yeah, that's a real possibility. Because this Something is actually also, um, one of the better meetings of all the meetings available, but we have to wait month to month. 
So, and I understand that your time is is doing other things, but if we could even, I mean, ultimately weekly would be amazing, but uh, every fortnight would be just as productive. Oh, well, thanks everybody for saying this is your favorite meeting. It actually is, I think, nearly everybody's favorite meeting of all of them. I think it hits very close to uh, what a lot of us spend our time doing on SL, so it feels like the uh, most right, relevant yeah. one. I think that even from, from, like, personally, I love listening on Marketplace. I get into my zone and I get really excited when I can achieve bulk listing in in really quick time because I love the SKU system and and things like that. Um, if I was going to point out something that's a bit of a concern, though, is when you go to upload images, that seems to stop things in their tracks, but people don't realize that you can go past the wait and keep adding. People think that they have to wait till one uh, loads. On the personal level, if I can ask, is there any chance whatsoever, and I realize this would not be a um, popularly used feature, but is there any chance for like an API for adding things to the marketplace? Uh, adding or changing? Uh, what, what would be your main reason for wanting one? Well, because if I can script, if I can write a Python script, to add new items to marketplace instead of uh, <laughs> um, clicking all the things. Obviously, I'll use that, but I can also understand that most people wouldn't. So you would want to do like a programmatic way of, of, of updating your listing so you don't have to do all the manual work? Yeah, absolutely. And I imagine that, uh, let's say, shops with uh, hundreds of items and uh, they can probably hire a scripter or a coder if they need to update 300 listings. Um, something very relevant to this is that PBR is coming soon and a lot of creators will uh, inevitably have to update certain products and that's a lot of items to go and edit and relist. Right, and I hope Marketplace is going to have a PBR checkbox too. Oh, yeah, but I also realize that an API, a public API, isn't is an attack vector, so I can request it, but uh, it's tricky. And this is also just a, you know, a whatever, but I'd really like you to add the editing, like basic editing tools to the conversational part of listings I'm, I'm not saying this right but you know how when you go to compose an email or whatever you get options font style color this that and the other it, it's it could potentially make a listing ugly but it could also make it very clear a lot of stuff gets lost because there's no way of actually bolding things or sectioning things unless you can have happen to find the ASCII code uh, icon characters that will actually work because not all of them do. Um, not really. <laughs> if you want emojis, sure. But do, do you get what I mean? Like some stuff needs to be really clear. This will not work with this or this works with that. And we don't have any tools built into the program to allow for that. And that seems like the most basic of things. So, uh, when you're like posting a, a product on and doing your product listing, you, you, there might be really key details that you need someone to see when they're right. looking at them to buy. Uh, and the only way to like change something in the text is to do it kind of like the old MySpace way where you'd have like the code that you type in or, or like special weird characters. <laughs> at the moment, you yeah. just have to caps everything. Yeah. So you need to well, do it all caps or put ASCII I around it. The circles. I think the circles and the squares will work, but not everything will work. So you, you have to, I, I once spent like hours trying to find which web dings or whatever will actually show up because even if you put them in there, they won't. Um, but there are like one or two that do. And that's just silly because, you know, we have 
like I said, in emails or, or blogs or whatever, you have an actual thing that allows you to bold, change the color, change the font, change the size. Okay, so uh, bold, size of the font, color of the font, uh, anything else you can think of? I saw emojis. Just whatever it is that that includes. Isn't that like some the sort of... The standard markdown stuff? So like yeah. underline, italic, you know, strike yeah, through, that kind of thing. The, isn't it But isn't it just a... Yeah, a markdown would be great. Thing? Yeah. Isn't that... A, it's the same in every website that has them. So isn't it just something you can add in and you don't have to think on it? It would just be there? We definitely can, yeah. That would be amazing to be able to do stuff like that. Uh, just out of my own curiosity, what's like the number one thing you're trying to uh, make sure that someone sees when you're like, oh, I need to make this one caps and make this bold so they know? Uh, I, I can guess, I can think of some, but I'm curious what you would say. Well, sometimes it's it, you need it to be even clearer that this won't work unless you have X body. Um, this won't, uh, you know, you need the additional. There are some products out there that this is the, Oh, furries, sorry to put, but furry mods, for instance, that's a big business. But unless you actually have the original avatar, you're buying a mod that doesn't work with anything. And a lot of people don't actually realize that, that they have to go to somebody else. Skins now, I can buy the face skin in one store, but I have to go to another store just to buy the, the, the body part of the skin. That's very new for, for, um, well, newish for, that sort of thing so people don't realize that they have to go and make a second purchase and it it needs to be communicated and we just don't have it yeah that makes total sense being able to just mention another listing direct like more kind of directly rather than having to just put random marketplace links in would be nice so you can say hey this is for this head or this is for this you know body etc that could be a there part of like the variance. There is a category in the thing that I've never really understood because it never seems to work. There is an actual thing that you are supposed to select, whether it's classic avatar or a brand avatar, but there doesn't seem to be any way to actually associate it with a brand, which I thought was for that. Yeah, that there is a tag that lets you say that it's meant for a specific body, but it doesn't let you specify the body or anything really right. so no yeah, one really I mean. uses it. it doesn't do anything okay i did not know that tag existed um, basically no one uses it it doesn't yeah. seem to do anything yeah i clickable links would be like at a bare minimum really helpful Yeah, all of that hyperlinking. So as I said, that whole editing suite that you get in every platform, usually when you're composing something, has hyperlink, bold, italic thing. But hyperlink is one of them. It would mean that we could make links links. Here's one more thing, just in case you would implement the API and people would um, script changes to like 300, 400 uh, items. Um, it would be nice to uh, have a button to revert in case somebody makes a mistake. Oh, uh, yeah, that's an interesting idea. It, what, what, like, is that like on the product listing when you're doing the actual listing or where would you want that button? Well, hmm. I don't know, but like, for example, if uh, someone has is trying to script and make changes to uh, a few hundred items at the same time, and they do make a mistake, I wouldn't even know how to go about making a UI that would roll back hundreds of items. Maybe recently, mo revert recently modified items from today or from specific date or specific time maybe like a time frame sure right like in web uh in in wordpress there's an archive like the wiki also has too there's an archive of of previous uh 
things that you've done, previous versions of, of the saved state, that would be good if you could go back to that because you could have just accidentally selected three items amongst amongst a bo- batch selection and then you've just suddenly made your 2,000 Linden fat packs, 75 Linden. But you don't want to have... Yeah, or, or, or very, very basic... Such a, a very basic version of that is uh, revert everything I've done in the last hour. Yeah. A rollback. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, somebody mentioned earlier that most people... Um, find listing a marketplace too much work so they just have an in world store uh what is it is it just like there's there's too many fields to fill out you have to make too many listings because you have to make duplicates is it because uh you just put i I mean for me like i I feel like it's hard because you have to pay for land they don't want to do the pictures for individual items is a lot to do with it they don't want to add a demo where they feel like they'll be bullied if they don't. They don't want to um, take up the resources of time that they don't have. I mean, a lot of people still don't realise that you've added management. For the pictures one, is that when you uh, – is that because we don't allow you to bulk upload the photos? Right, because like I said, a lot of people actually sit there and wait. But if you click it again, it opens a new, it it will open and allow you to select another one and then select another one. So you can be faster. It's just that you haven't made it um, understandable that it's a thing. Uh, It's a great suggestion on the variance one. I had not figured uh, that we could do something like that. It's a great idea. An interesting idea might also be when you've mentioned bulk uploading the images, it would be really kind of cool if you could bulk upload a whole session into like a gallery and then you just pull from that gallery for the item might be time saving as well, which would also allow for management because when you do management of a brand and you do their listings for them, um, they actually have to pass you all the images if you didn't take the images in the first place. So they're sending you the images, then you've got them on your computer and blah, blah, blah. Whereas if if uh, the store owner just batch uploaded 500 images for their store into their gallery and then somebody goes to do the listing and just pulls from those images, just like, again, you do on WordPress or something like that, that would make things so much easier. If I can expand, because this is a great idea, if I, if I can expand on that, um, allow each store, each brand to have its own, like maybe an internal image bank, like um, an internal Flickr, let, let's say, where, yeah, people upload a bunch of images and um, somebody with access can go and uh, use that in listings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we replace option, exactly. Great idea. And it would be called the Sassy Gallery. <laughs> uh, for the category, uh, keep so we, I have a lot of stuff that is in the pipeline for coming out, uh, but I don't want we're not, we're not quite ready to talk about it. So just keep your eye on our blogs and our socials, um, and you'll see some stuff come out that people have been asking for um, over the next month before we meet again. So we'll be meeting in two weeks, though, right? We might. I'll see what I can do. Please, please consider that because, I mean, just just this, it's like a round table, you know, except it's oblong. The the playing off each other for the ideas is is really wonderful and and the Lindens being here that can actually action on it is wonderful to you. Uh, I will also say that I I do look at all JIRA tickets that get submitted for anything Marketplace related. Um, and when we get good ideas, they do end up getting worked on and coming out soon. Uh, so don't, you know, shy away from using that as well. I know a lot of times it can kind of feel like it's getting thrown into like this kind of like dark void. We don't know what's going on because um, we get so many of them. But I, I promise I look at every one of them, at least all the ones that are that have come in since I started becoming Linden. Um, 
Um, I'm going to ask a question, and uh, I'm not sure if you'll answer because maybe it's just in the pipeline, maybe it's in planning. But is there any sort of um, Flickr alternative being worked on by Linden Labs for Second Life? Not currently. No, I'm because if there was, why you ask? Okay, so because if there was, it would be nice to be able to link that to marketplace, so people could, for example, if I bought something off marketplace and. Um, I made a picture of uh, uh, my avatar with that. I could link it back to Marketplace in the product review. Okay. Um, I'm curious for when when you're finding things on Marketplace. There's like the obvious journey of, of the obvious kind of like way where people like go to the Marketplace and then they just search something. Um, is there any other way that you might find something? Like it, I've heard people go to Flickr and then they'll look at pictures and then go to an item that way. Um, is there any, like, is it social media sometimes that you may look at and then get directed to like a product page or something like that? Right. And group notices, group notices is a lot. You'll get a group notice and, and this, this is where the hit and miss comes with people listing their items and not wanting to because it's cumbersome and it's a chore is that when somebody releases something, it should be a landmark to this store and a link to their marketplace and often somebody won't list on their marketplace for months, years, etc. but they don't do those things together. But when they do, people will go to marketplace over teleporting somewhere. They'll click that link by that item because they didn't even have to move. That makes sense to me. Um, you said and groups, do you, do you have like a specific, is it like a group? Like I know there's, there's certain brands that have groups, right? Um, is there like a group that kind of like that there that aren't like a specific brand group or a specific brand that you look at? There, there are a few groups that kind of aggregate between them, but they're often uh, they're often just you pick your favorite businesses that you can stand to you'd sacrifice a group for and stash all those in there. Uh, what's some suggestions for ones that you take a look at? What's new SL is a, a combination group, so that's hundreds of dis, hundreds of stores in one place. Um, so that one you'll you'll get a lot of drop downs that will be links to marketplace or links to this store. Um, but most store brands have store groups. Um, yeah, Discord's another thing. Uh, The problem with Flickr is that unless you're a premium, you're not supposed to be doing it at all. So those people are actually putting their stores at risk by uh, listing anything to do with commercial and not being pro. Okay, I'll definitely check out what's new SL. A lot of people use Marketplace now as a, a, a reduction site. So they'll put an item for sale uh, at a reduced price to get people, you know, not going to the big big events or the big events of sh shopping sales. They'll just do one for their Quite own store. Stuff, yeah. Oh, thank you for the link. Ah, I had not figured uh, that Facebook might be doing something like that, but that makes sense now in retrospective. It's a shame. They sh should really, you know, be willing to have anybody make whatever account they want. Uh, okay, so we're past time. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. I will definitely see what we can do about meetings more often uh, and be on the lookout for some updates that are going to be coming out uh, over the week of September. We've got a lot of cool things that are coming to come out really, really soon. Some of them Another are uh, directly from like the JIRA requests. Just, just to put it out there too, it might be a really good idea for face, uh, sorry, for marketplace to consider, I don't think you have it, consider a new listings uh, gallery. 
could be just at the like bottom category? of the page. Uh, it just that you know it's just been listed, so why not throw it down there? Like you have a section that shows this was just sold. Just, yeah, um, what people buy. Right. Why not have and, – and, and it's brought attention to items many times for me, but uh, – if newly listed, I mean, if it catches your eye that somebody just newly listed something, that might be a really good idea. Um, you know, so, oh, and and one more thing for you to think about until the next meeting. Can we have an X-rated category, like one above adult? Because we'll go an X-rated. So well, I saw, like, adult is just, you're an adult. You're 18 plus. That's all adult actually means. But SL can get dark. Like really, really dark. And I saw something yesterday that like my whole, like it was just, it was just really not, yeah, but it's it's not used like that. People put adult, they just put, you know, a, a vagina attachment and a penis attachment. That's adult. Sure. That's fine. But I saw amputation, not covers, but the actual, like, yeah, that it was bad. The, um, I will say that the, this is something we've, we've talked about internally before, and I still get confused about what exactly is mature and what exactly is adult. Um, but it's above I think my pay grade. Do too. And then people flag things for no reason and all sorts of craziness. But yeah, there's there's stuff that's just way out there. And I have adult activated because I'm an adult, but also because some stores, they'll just list a, a dress that plunges too low or or shows your bottom cheeks and they'll put it in adult so they don't get flagged so you don't see content if you don't have adult listed but i would not want to show x-rated got it duly noted right so just a thought thanks everybody this was a Hope great to see you all again soon thank you very much Thank you. You're all awesome. <laughs>